and are cute as Katamari Damacy meets Pikmin in the style of Agretzko. Take over the world in a crowd-controlling beat-em-up with an adorable roster of raging animals. Evil megacorps are committing war crimes, and it's up to you to save your friends, create anarchy, and save the world. Walk over items big and small to auto-pick up and use his ammunition to throw at the brainwash control who stand in your way of total freedom. When there's nothing to throw, throw paws and claws to beat up anyone and anything. Capture flags, unplug antenna, and destroy brainwash patrol buildings to save the world. Utilize slams, rolls, and swappable power-ups to do it all in style. 41 levels and 5 boss fights spread across 5 worlds offer a short experience, but a built-in ranking system supplies some extra replayability. The faster you go, the more friends you save, and the more enemies you take out, the higher your rank will be. The movement here is a bit loosey-goosey. Your input seems to control a single core unit, with every other unit gravitating around that unit. Roaming the open streets and surrounding single enemies feels natural and fluid, but finessing around lasers and snipers starts to feel like there's no real control. Like, it's fun to play with slime, until they ask you to recreate David of Michelangelo. You start to realize this goopy system isn't strong enough for these rigid constraints. I do think this is done intentionally, since you're trying to control and wrangle this ever-growing rioting crowd. However, it doesn't really feel like you've made a mistake when they walk into lasers or enemy attacks. Rather, it just feels like your dumb cute little animals walk there for no reason. Throwing objects is simple and satisfying when it works. Trash cans, chairs, tables, umbrellas, fences, bushes, beach balls, tetrapods, newspaper stands, and cars are all at your disposal. This is your virtual rage room. But thrown objects often clip other held objects or miss their targets entirely. This is extra frustrating when it's a lock-on system and there's no way to correct for that. You're holding a red 2003 Dodge Neon above your head and three juicy targets are locked on, and the throw hits the newspaper stand you're holding and flies far to the right, kind of like your average Andrew Tate Alpha G. And then it hits nothing, unlike Andrew Tate. You have flying helicopters that can only be damaged by thrown objects, and hitting every item completely misses even though it's locked on. Well, the angle must be wrong. So you pick up some more objects nearby, you change the angle, and then those miss too. So now you're left with nothing to throw, you're being attacked, and it feels like the entire run is doomed, especially if you're going for that S rank. Levels have some rotating main objectives, but they all mostly play the same. Capture three flags, destroy two brainwashed patrol buildings, unplug four antenna, all boil down to enemies surrounding that main objective, and ally reinforcements being placed on the outskirts to encourage exploration. This is also where you'll find those unlockable animals that you can add or remove from the pool to make sure your crowd comprises of your favorite animals. Do you like oxalotls? Yeah, we got them. Do you like crocodiles? Yeah, we got them too. Do you like furry animals? Yeah, we got them. There are a few stealth levels that feel like bonus levels, and they actually play fairly well. They're minimalistic and the ranking system feels a bit silly because it's only time, but they're quick and generous and create something slow and tense compared to the loud and chaotic regular gameplay loop. New enemy types are introduced consistently throughout the game, keeping the game feeling pretty fresh. Basic melee units, heavy units that slam requiring you to dodge roll away, flying units like helicopters and drones that can only be attacked with thrown objects, reinforcement helicopters dropping additional enemies, sniper rifle units, tear gas grenades, fully automatic rifles, and armored personnel carriers. Uh, wait. Those last few were the militarization of US police departments. My bad. Each enemy type comes with its own strengths and weaknesses, requiring you to adapt for each encounter. 
There are also various enemies who drop their weapons after being killed, allowing you to fight fire with fire. As the game progresses, the difficulty ramps up as well. While it encourages playing smart to not lose party members, it also tends to showcase the flawed throwing mechanics and loose movement as it demands more from the player. Similar feelings towards the ranking system for each level. While it promotes replayability, the demanding grading rubric often pushes the player to do more in less time, and the game isn't really built for that. For a casual playthrough, I think these issues would be far and few, and result in a really enjoyable 6 hour experience. The story is simple, but it fits the tone of the game well. Cutscenes are short, and don't adjust to your audio settings. I don't think the cutscenes are affected by the, the volume settings. And Q. It actually has some well-timed jokes and moments near the end of the game that I'm not going to spoil here. The visuals are bright, colorful, and clean, with the focus being on growing your collection of animals. If you own a single Build-A-Bear, you legally have to buy this game. Sorry. Location-based worlds like Tokyo and Paris, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> Paris, allow the basic design of levels to stay the same, but with new color palettes and new objects to freshen the game. Visual clarity is lost sometimes in the swarm of allies and enemies and objects, but it's a small price to pay for the feeling of total anarchy. The sound design and music are both phenomenal. Opening the game greets you with a bright and poppy theme song. Sound effects are crisp and satisfying to pick up, throw, or punch. Released and developed by Anar Team in July 2016, it was actually a part of ID at Xbox, which is Microsoft's indie game program to help small development teams like this self-publish their games to Xbox and PC. It was later brought to Nintendo Switch in May 2019. All three platforms currently retail at $15, often on sale for three, at least here on Steam. No missable achievements, but 100% might be kind of hard and or annoying to get S rank on all levels. Too long didn't watch. Anarchute feels like soccer boppers or pugil sticks. Pugil? Pugil. 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 Pugils? A fun and safe way to let out your inner rage. Throw caution to the wind and swing wildly because no matter how hard you hit, it's the experience that matters. But when the game asks you to fence with that pugil stick, you're gonna struggle. Just keep it fun, keep it casual, and you're gonna leave happy. Thank you so much for watching. This is video two in my series of VPIG, very positive indie gems. These videos are going to change around a lot so please feel free to leave comments on what you like and don't like, or any direction you'd like to see this go in. For me, I'll be leaving my own personal feelings in the description of each video. Kiss that like button, marry the subscribe button, and kill the bell. Real ones never ring the bell.